here, I'm Bill Powers, and uh, uh, today I'm going over some little handy dandy little devices that we use in North Carolina uh, in the um, prosecution of driving while impaired offenses. Uh, next to me is the old breathalyzer. Uh, it was a device made by um, primarily Smith & Wesson uh, Company. This was the breathalyzer 900A. Uh, and I also have some of the other uh, tools that we use um, roadside. Uh, this is the Alka-Sensor FST, uh, which is a handheld device, and then we also have the Alka-Sensor, in this instance it's the Alka-Sensor 3, which is the three-digit uh, LED lighted electrical display. Uh, and these two devices, and, and I want to compare and contrast them to the breathalyzer, because these two devices are used roadside. Now, uh, I have clients come in um, all the time and uh, they say, I blew so-and-so on a breathalyzer. I'm like, time out. Um, I need to know what you're talking about, not to be uh, difficult about that, but there's a tremendous difference between uh, even the old-fashioned one and the ones that we have um, downtown, which are for evidentiary purposes, versus the ones on the side of the road. Approximately in 2006, um, we transitioned from uh, allowing a numeric value to come in when you blow and you get a reading. Uh, and what, are, what devices we're going to use are, are, are approved devices in the state of North Carolina through the North Carolina Administrative Code. Now this device here, the Alka Sensor, um, is made by a company referred to as Intoximeters. They're based in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, and this was one of the first devices approved for roadside testing. Uh, this one happens to be an, uh, an Alka-Sensor 3 because it's got a three-digit display. The original uh, Alka-Sensor, which is referred to as an Alka-Sensor, uh, has a two-digit display. Uh, it uses an electrochemical fuel cell. Uh, it measures, they think, because it's at a, an atomic level, they think it measures the amount of hydrogen coming out of uh, your breath. Um, if you want to know more about this, I've got three-hour-long PowerPoint presentations, but some of the science of it involves the molecule of ethyl alcohol or ethanol, carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, hydroxide. There's a lot of hydrogen around it. And uh, hydrogen gives off energy when it, it's placed across a, um, or blown across a fuel cell plate and it gives our electric reading when it discharges its energy, basically. Basically works like a battery that makes an electrical current with the al al alcohol or ethyl alcohol fumes from your breath. Now this is still an approved device. This is a device that we can use in North Carolina. And the officers um, ask you some questions when you last had something to drink. They're supposed to make sure that you haven't had something, relatively speaking, uh, recently. Uh, they have you take a deep breath and exhale. Um, they, you, know, you hear a clicking noise, they cock it. And then when, you, when they're ready to take the sample, they manually just hold the number down and they watch the number. In this instance, it would go up. Um, in about 2005, 2006, when we changed the law and when the law went into effect, we actually added a newer device. Um, this is called the Alka Sensor FST, um, field sobriety test, field um, testing device. Um, and so this is now an approved device. You tend to see this particular uh, device on the side of the road in North Carolina more than the, the older um, versions. And um, in 2005, six, like when we changed law versus when it went into effect, we went from allowing the numerical reading to be admissible in court for determination of probable cause to arrest to not allowing that and only allowing um, uh, the officer to testify that the reading was either positive or negative for alcohol. So prior to the law changing, if you challenged probable cause in North Carolina, you challenged the officer's, officer's legal ability or following the law to arrest you, the number came in. In 2006, when we changed the law, the number no longer comes in, and we adopted a device that you can, um, has a little screen here, and you can click through uh, and make the reading uh, say either pause or neg. By the way, it also gives a numerical reading. Now that's important. I think it's relevant to consider the fact that when we change the law allowing a number, we also uh, develop or approve a device that just doesn't give a number. Unfortunately, there is an over-reliance at times on these by law enforcement. Um, sorry, my friends at law enforcement love you, but there's, there, there can be an over-reliance on them. That's especially true if someone's pulled over and the first thing you do is pop this thing into your particular mouth or this particular device into your mouth. 
they read a number, and then thereafter, they want to start the investigation of driving while impaired. And the whole point of the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration testing protocols, what we call it NHTSA, kind of the gold standard for testing, is to give a fair, consistent, quasi-scientific, unbiased um, uh, a series of tests to people to make a determination of whether they were appreciably impaired. And that's the language we use in North Carolina. Um, so NHTSA recommends that you do this as a confirmational device as opposed to an over-reliance on a number. I do see cases where the first thing they do um, is pop this in your mouth and then we can talk about implicit bias all we want. That's an explicit bias. And, and for the record, the number is not admissible in court uh, either to show that you were impaired, if, if you're saying, well, judge, we didn't get the, you know, the breathalyzer or the one down, downtown, which is actually called ECIR2 ECIR now. Um, one's considered evidentiary level, meaning that it, it has a scientific level of reliability, that the number itself is what is used, at least in part, to prosecute you and potentially convict you of driving while impaired. These handheld devices are not. Uh, personal opinion on, on these type of devices is that they're, they're kind of stone tools in a, in a surgical field. I know the manufacturer says that they're as reliable. They're not, in my mind. They're subject to things like uh, residual mouth alcohol. Uh, they don't have um, all the safeguards and protections of some of the bigger devices like a, a heated breath tube or, or um, a, a computer inside that reads and, and confirms there's an alveolar reading and things, alveoli being in your lungs. Um, and so it's a neat little handy dandy thing, um, but it shouldn't be used as a sole basis of probable cause. In fact, it really should be done towards the end of the DWI investigation only to determine if there was alcohol in the system per the statute. Now there is a little bit of a wink, wink, nod, nod that goes on in court at times. It's frustrating as a defense lawyer because I know this, they can set this device just to read pause or neg, because um, I own one, obviously, and that's the standard that officers are supposed to use. And they still use the readings, and I see it in reports every day. Someday, uh, I hope uh, that we uh, in the system, my friends on the prosecution side, my friends on, on the bench, and my friends in law enforcement, will um, maybe get everybody just to go and click pause or negative on this thing and use it as it was intended per the statute. Uh, if you have more questions about these devices, if you would like me to come to your school, uh, your workplace, if you'd like me to come to your office, if you're a DA's office or a Defense Lawyers Association, if you're judges, um, heck, I'll come. Uh, I'll actually bring, uh, we have law enforcement officers that um, teach at different academies, justice academies um, here in Charlotte and other parts across the state that will come with. And we'll give you an unbiased, unvarnished uh, opinion and, 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 and explanation of how these devices work and how DWI law, uh, laws are enforced in the state of North Carolina. I'm here to help. I, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy educating people um, within and without the system uh, as to how these devices work. And um, if you want to even swing by the office, take a look. Um, love to see you. The telephone number is 704-342-HELP. That's 704-342-HELP. And I throw out a challenge here. If anyone has more of these particular devices, prove it. Uh, we, we have a bunch of them here, and I love showing them off, and I admit I'm kind of a techie dork. So I um, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for your time.